friends, fellow mathematicians, and welcome back to the Art of Integration. We're going to take a look at an interesting integral involving the floor function. Now let's start by going just over a few basic facts about the floor function in case you're not familiar with it. So for our integral here, notice the integral goes from 0 to infinity. So we're going to consider x to be a positive real number. The floor function for a positive real number basically just rounds down to the closest integer. All right, if we had to take a look at some of these basic values here, the floor function of 2.3 rounds down to 2. Floor function of 3.98 rounds down to 3. Now, the graph of the floor function is interesting, and that's going to give us a clue how to start evaluating our integral here. Notice the floor function is constant on integer intervals. So from the interval 0 to 1, the floor function 0, 1 to 2, the floor function is 1, 2 to 3, the floor function is 2, and then so on and so on. Now our integral here will be difficult to evaluate by first finding an antiderivative because you probably don't know an antiderivative in terms of the floor function. Instead, what we're going to do is take our integral and make use of this fact that the floor function is constant on integer intervals. So we're going to split this up as an integral from 0 to 1, then an integral from 1 to 2, another integral from 2 to 3, another integral from 3 to 4, so on and so on. All right, and what this is giving us is now an infinite sum of integrals where we're integrating over integer intervals. We can write this in summation notation. Since our first integral starts with 0, let's start our summation index n with 0. So I'll write this as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Our integral now is going to go from n to n plus 1. And our function right now is the same, e raised to the negative of the floor function of x. All right, now we can make use of our basic fact here that the floor function will be constant over an integer interval. And that's exactly what we have here. Notice our integral goes from n to n plus 1. So here, the floor function just rounds down to the next smallest integer, which would be n on that interval. All right, and what we get is now a very simple integral. We can go ahead and rewrite this as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Our integral goes from n to n plus 1. And now we're replacing the floor function of x with its value, which is just n here. Now, notice we're integrating this with respect to x, but our function now only depends on n. So I can pull this constant, e to the negative n, in front of the integral, but be careful, you can't pull it in front of the summation over n. So let's go ahead and rewrite this now as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, we're going to pull the e to the negative n in front of the integral, and our integral now goes from n to n plus 1. And that integral there is really simple to evaluate. You can go ahead and find an antiderivative for the function that you're integrating there, which is technically 1. That antiderivative would be x. Go ahead and then evaluate that at n plus 1 and subtract when you evaluate it at n, and you'll find this integral comes out to 1. So we get here now the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of just e to the negative n. And if you are familiar with basic results from calculus 2, you can recognize that as a geometric series. Let's go ahead and rewrite the term here e to the negative n, we can rewrite that as 1 over e 
all to the nth power. And that now makes it look more like the term for a geometric series, a number to the nth power. Now the benefit of this, the ratio for this geometric series, one over E, that's less than one. And that implies that our geometric series is convergent. The nice thing about a convergent geometric series is you can find the sum. And that's gonna be the value for our integral. Now you might not be familiar with the sum formula, but the formula for the sum of a geometric series is A divided by one minus R, where A is the starting term and R is the common ratio. And here we're gonna be using R as one over E. So at this point, we now have our sum because this is a convergent geometric series. If you write out terms here, notice when you plug in n equals zero, your first term will be one. So we'll be using r as one over e and a as one. And we're just gonna plug that into the sum formula. We get one and then now divided by one minus one over e. And there we go. Now we can clean this up a little bit. I don't like having fractions within fractions. So I'm gonna multiply the numerator by E and the denominator. And if you go ahead and distribute, our numerator here will become E. And if we distribute this E in the denominator there, we get in our denominator E minus one. And there we go. Now this was a really interesting problem because the floor function is difficult to integrate by itself, but with a little bit of creativity, noticing that the floor function is constant over integer intervals, we actually get a really interesting result here, turning our integral into an infinite series. Hope you enjoyed the problem. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.